Hey, hey, and welcome, it's John Nolan here, and today we're welcoming back the one and only Max Egan on the Inspired channel. This is the third time he joins us for an Inspired conversation, and we're gonna go deep into what's happening in the world, how his life has been in the past year since leaving Australia, and Max is sharing the simple but very profound solutions to our greatest problems in the world right now. Uh, we're taking the full circle journey together. But first, stop what you're doing and check this out. Multiple reports warn about incoming cyber attacks. There's reason to believe that foreign hackers are researching and preparing to launch an unprecedented attack on US infrastructure. This is why I highly recommend Virtual Shield to keep yourself anonymous online. Virtual Shield helps protect your online identity by keeping your browsing activity hidden from internet service providers, hackers, big tech, and foreign countries. Right now, they're offering 50% off to our subscribers for life. If you sign up today, you will get a free 30 day trial for the next 24 hours by going to virtualshield.com forward slash inspired or by clicking the link down below. Go try it for free right now. Thank you for joining us today for another Inspired Conversation. And we're so excited and grateful to welcome back a special friend of the Inspired channel, Max Egan. Max, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here, brother. Always good to come and talk to you. It's wonderful to see you, Max. You, you've had a tumultuous year in, uh, in many ways. So much has changed in your life, and we've talked about it in our previous interview. But a lot of people just want to know, how are you doing? How are you feeling? How are you, Max? You know, Max, the human being, not just Max, the truth seeker who's serving all other people. How are you, my friend? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I mean, it's good here in Mexico. I, I do like it. I like the environment. I'm still in pretty much limbo. I'm, I'm kind of staying in a, in a kind of a guest house sort of a situation. But I mean, it's, it's okay. It's, I, I can do everything I, I need to do from here and I'm kind of comfortable, but I haven't found exactly where I want to be in Mexico yet. Um, but I don't intend to stay here for the duration anyway. I mean, I'm only going to be here as long as I need to be here. But, uh, you know, overall, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I mean, I've spent most of my life on the road, so I'm kind of used to this sort of stuff. I think my, uh, my whole previous life experience kind of prepared me for this, so it's all good. Well, that's wonderful to hear. And, and I know you, um, you're observing the situation in Australia and your home and what's going on there. And um, whether you look at that country or, or any other country, and I've, I've watched your most recent report, there's one thing that you and I share is, I mean, even with, even with what we know and what we've researched over all this time, we can just shake our heads at how um, fast paced this breaking apart of the system is and this falling down. Um, do you see, and still a intensification moving forward, do you see any signs that things are slowing down? And, um, you know, how's your, her view in the, your view on the current situation right now? We're in a lull at the moment. I mean, they've really been exposed. In many ways, the narrative is crumbling, the COVID narrative. I think they, they pushed too hard too quickly and they did it in such a way that even people within the system are seeing it now. Even mainstream, like you were, were saying before the show, a chemist you know is now starting to question the narrative, someone who's been right there through it, believing in the whole thing. So it's falling down. So they've had to have a bit of a lull. I mean, I've heard that they've dropped a whole bunch of restrictions in Australia. Apparently, I could just fly home now. I can go back there unvaccinated and all sorts of stuff. But you've got to wonder what's around the corner. Yeah, because there's an election in Australia next month, so I'd say they've dropped all the restrictions for the election. But when you look around the world, you look what's happening in Ukraine. Ukraine's one of the biggest food producers in that whole area. Um, you look at what's going on in the United States. Recently, there's been a, a spate of fires and explosions in food processing plants right across the United States. That seems a little strange, doesn't it? So there's all of this sort of stuff that's being set up. We're heading for massive food shortages, a massive food crisis is going to happen this year. Um, prices are already skyrocketing. So there's all of this stuff in the background. So before they bring all that in, their next food crisis, which, oh, it wasn't our fault. It's because of the pandemic. It's because of Putin invading Ukraine and all the things, the excuses they'll use. They've got to appear like they're the good guys. We did all this for the last two years to help you. Now we're releasing them. We want to go back to normal. Oh, but dear, we can't because 
of all of this domino stuff that's happened, which has all been in planned. It's all been pre-planned. And that's why it's happened so quickly. When you see what's happened in the last two years, how quickly it's been to break down the system, like almost completely, because they spent the last 60 to 100 years setting all the dominoes in place, all they had to do is flick that first one, and now everything's just going to go its natural course. That's why they set up all the codependency. In my first film, The Big Picture, I said the codependency that's being set up between nations or this international interdependency upon other nations, all nations are losing their autonomy, they're losing their self-sufficiency, we're all dependent upon everybody else. This has all been set up for a reason, so all they have to do is stop the supply chains and everything's going to break down and they'll get their depopulation and they'll get their order out of chaos that they they want. You know, in Australia now, like with the floods and things that they've just seen, we had the fires there, then the floods in the most enlightened area of the country, of course, getting all these people off their homes and off into these smart cities. Now the whole East Coast, there's 52 smart cities they want to create along the East Coast to build back better, you know, make things more efficient, keep us all safe, all more monitoring, rah, rah, rah. So it's all part of the plan. And they've got to appear like they're the good guys. They've got to appear like they're rolling it all back and the next domino is not their fault. They've got Russia they can blame now, which is why the war in Ukraine happened exactly when it did. And people who think Russia's taking down the deep state, and sure, Russia's, Putin's barred all these certain people from coming into Russia and we're all looking going, well, these are all the people who we hate too, so he must be awake. You know, it's a, it's a bone. They're throwing a bone to the truth community, the way Trump was a bone for the truth community, the way Q was a bone for the truth community. Sit back, do nothing, it's all good. The white hats are in there to save you. Meanwhile, when you look at Russia, the same bio-digital uh, surveillance system is rolling out in Russia, social crediting, everything, it's all exactly the same. It's just their own version of it. So, yeah, I mean, things are not over. There is definitely a calm happening at the moment, and it's an opportunity for us. If, if enough people do wake up and we don't forget what happened in the last two years and we actually hold these people to account, we have got an opportunity now to actually take back the system for ourselves and move the world in the direction that we want it to go in. But we've got to be, like I said, aware that there's, there's another play going on behind the background. And while everyone's distracted with Ukraine and worrying about whether the virus is here or gone or whatever, this whole smart system is continuing to roll out, which has been the plan right since the invention of television. So, yeah. And, and I think this is such an important thing to understand. You, you mentioned a lot of times the past two years, it's a new age that began and people want to say it's it's the age of light or it's the age of love. And while we're it's all of our intentions to move into it, I believe we're in the age of discernment. Never more than now um, do we need to understand what the end goals are and that we are in this um, in this spiritual war and in a real physical war. It's a war against humanity. And as you've touched on, there is an end goal. There is a, tra a transhumanism, posthumanism, a completely transformed different society. Um, we've seen some really positive momentum, like you mentioned um, this year, something that happened earlier was a trucker movement in Canada, which has an incredible energy to it. It, it really, uh, you know, a lot of people really felt through, uh, through different countries and continents. And um, I, I think part of the reason why the Ukraine situation was switched on at that point was because there was a momentum for freedom everywhere. How do we turn it back on? Because these energy windows, they come and go, but how do we turn them on better, quicker, and expand them so we can change the narrative and actually start getting in control rather than just reacting to what's happening? Well, to realize that, that that energy that you feel, I mean, a lot of people, they're scared of themselves. They're scared of the power that they've got. When they see something like the trucker blockade happening and this big trucker convoy happening, it's an external thing to them. It's something for them to focus on and give their energy to, but it's someone else doing it for them. They're not doing it. They're just sitting there watching and cheering on from the sidelines. You know, I've, I've said way back when the Occupy movement was happening and they occupied Wall Street and they didn't know what they wanted. They just knew they didn't want what we have. We just want something different. Yeah. So well, what, what's your goal? And they go, we don't know. We just want all this to go away. And I used to say then, you don't need to occupy Wall Street because we human beings already occupy the entire earth, but we don't occupy ourselves. You know, non-compliance, simply getting back on with your life is how to, how to get through this. You've got that energy from the blockade. You're seeing what they're doing. All they're doing is saying no. 
We're not going to do what you're told, what you tell us. We're going to go and do what we want to do. If everybody applied that to their own lives and supported the people around them in doing that, we'd change the world in a day. You know, this whole thing that's happened has been due to our compliance. Like when you look at the people locked down in Shanghai, 26 million people, three or 4,000 people have told them to lock down. Three or 4,000 people are in control of 26 million. I think I see a way out. You know, if all of these people simply said no and got on with their lives, and if we did that right around the world, that's the momentum that we need. You can see the lies now. You can see the lies. The whole thing is crumbling. The whole narrative is crumbling. And now that you know, everyone's been freaked out about COVID for the last two years, now you've suddenly got this war in Ukraine and everyone's going, well, hang on a minute. What, what about COVID? Aren't we still supposed to? And they're going, oh, yeah, yeah, COVID's still dangerous, but we've got our... Uh, it, it, none of it makes any sense. So when people can see the lie for what it is and realise that everything's a lie and, and just become human again, that's the key to the whole thing. You know, we've got to stop externalising it. When we see these trucker blockades, when we see these things, realise that we can do this ourselves. You can do this without even leaving your home. You know, the best protest that you have is to be a real human being. That's the best thing you can do. Be a real human being, be supportive of your own life, of your own family and of the people around you and just get on with your life and make things work. I've always said it's a lot easier to get forgiveness than, for, than permission. So when you see something that needs doing, just go and do it. That's the way out of this. It really is. Why do people think they have rulers? Why do people think they need to be told when they can be free and when they can't be free and when they can go to the store and when they can do this and when they can do that? What is wrong with people? You know, we've got to, we've got to get over this hump. And, and that's what this is. If people can look at it through the right eyes, they can see how they've been controlled into this and how simple it would be to just do something else. I mean, you know, that, that's really the way out. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's an internal thing. It's, it's, the problem is that people want someone like me or someone like you to come along and say, I've got the solution. Here's my, my plan. Here's my draft. You all follow these directions and then we'll get to here. Well, hang on, you're just looking for another ruler or another person to come and tell you what to do and, and you know, hope that when it gets there, you'll just be able to get on with your lives and buy the same magazines and do the same stuff that you were doing before, which wasn't freedom. You know, we've got an opportunity for freedom here. We've got an opportunity to rediscover what it means to be human here. And that's what I see coming out of this. I see a really, really positive future coming out of all this because, I mean, there's no going back to what we were and there's no going back to having any faith in these politicians or this system or the medical industry or the media or any of it anymore. They're not going to be able to live this down. They're not going to be able to just brush it under the carpet, what they've done in the last two years, not unless they can keep the fluoride levels up in the population anyway. But, um, you know, they've, they've uh, created a situation where we, we have to become human again now and we have to take the matter in hand. We have to be a man and be a woman, you know, get, get back in touch with that divinity that exists inside you. Stop being told what to do and that's the way out. Oh my goodness, Max, you're on fire and in such a beautiful way. I, I love what you said also about leadership for yourself. And this is something so dear to our hearts. Exactly what you said. We don't, we don't, I don't want to rule anyone. I don't want to tell anyone what to do. Uh, you can only lead by example and say, I'm doing what I feel is right in my heart and I'm following that. And I encourage you all to do the same. You do the same thing. And I believe if any definition is good for leader, it's someone who, who serves, serves their community. I think to me, that's the definition of leader, but also to lead yourself and, and have discernment. Um, a, good, a good leader's real goal is to make himself obsolete, you know, <laughs> to create other leaders, teach people how to lead themselves, you know. Exactly. And, and this is what we've been saying for such a long time. It is a time for millions and millions of leaders out there, um, you know, to, to rediscover that within yourself. And we all know now the, the, the timeline, I mean, you've, you've said this, you've said this and so many others have laid this out over years and decades now. Yes, there is a plan. Yes, there is a timeline. Yes, there is a goal that they want to reach. But who the fuck really cares what they want? And why do we care so much what they want? And and people will tell us, well, why do you pay attention to it? Because we, you need to understand that something that looks shiny isn't always worthy of your support just because it looks good on the surface. So that's why we bring information out so you can see this is not the real deal. Like you said recently, there's uh, perceived heroes like Elon Musk, but they're not really heroes. 
what they do in the background is diametrically opposed to what they present here. I can't run a company that wants to control your brain and at the same time say, I'm going to buy Twitter so I can have free speech. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely insane that people fall for this, but it is one more piece in the puzzle. Now, here's, here's a question that I have for you. This, um, this falling down and breaking apart of all systems. The thing is that both this ominous cult or, or cabal wants this, and we want this too, because the system, as you said, was an oppression system. The thing is, they already have a solution in place that's even worse, way worse. What is, wh how would you describe it for people? What, what a new way of living would look like? How would freedom, so many people don't even know what real freedom would look like. What would a day in a real free world look like for you? Well, the thing is, people don't understand what freedom is. Freedom is self-responsibility, complete 100% responsible for your own actions. When you open that door and you, you go out and you get on with your life, you, you don't interfere with anybody else's life. You don't interfere with anything. You don't cause harm, damage, injury or loss to anyone or anything. But nothing, none of that comes to you as well. That's, that's freedom, taking responsibility for yourself. And a lot of people don't want that. They want to be free to do nothing. They want to be free to just have nobody tell them what to do and to be able to just, just do what they want to do. But at the same time, they want free money. They want free this. They want free that. They want they want to actually go and create their own food or create their own house or do any of this sort of stuff. So, I mean, with what they're doing with this this system, with it all breaking down, like you say, we, we, we all want it to break down. We want it to break down and they want it to break down as well. But they want to be able to then offer us their solution. Like you say, they've already got a solution in place. What we've got to do is realize that this is an opportunity for us to discover ourselves again. The problem is, you know, what, what freedom looks like is, is basically a world without any of this surveillance technology, the world without smartphones and things like that, which is a complete freak out for a lot of people, which is why so many people are going to choose that system. They only know freedom and reality and enjoyment by what the powers that believe they be have given them to experience those things through. You know, like you live in a, in a people farm, you live in a pen, and now they've taken access, your access away to all the designated enjoyment zones they created within your pen. You know, the restaurants and the theatres and the ball games and the rock concerts and the whatever it is. And that's all people know how to do for enjoyment. They've forgotten what it means to be, be human. They don't know how to go down the beach and have a drum circle or go and enjoy the forest or just go and spend time with their friends or without some big entertainment spectacular happening in front of them, you know what I mean? So they've forgotten all that. And that's what they're scared of losing. They're scared of losing all of this stuff that's been given to them for pleasure because they don't know the pleasure of just being alive, the pleasure of being with animals, the pleasure of being with you. I saw a video today of a little girl who was reunited with the donkey that first that she, she raised. And this donkey was just so happy to see this little girl. That's pleasure. That's enjoyment. That's what it means to be a human, that sort of stuff. You don't have to go to the theatre and do all this sort of shit. So, you know, freedom is is living your life to the fullest of your potential and, and doing what you came here to do, which is, is discovering yourself and what it means to be you. You know, how many people have done that? How many people go through their lives and they collect this huge pile of stuff and they think that's success, but they never got to know themselves, never really got to know their partner, never really got to know their children, never got to know the earth and what life was really about. They just think it's this big meaningless thing and the one with the most wins, you know. So when you have that sort of a society and you look at the situation the world's in today, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's no wonder that it's come to this. It's no wonder they've been able to get away to this. And it's no wonder that now we're at this point where people can make that choice to become human again or go into that system. They don't even see the choice. They don't even know what it is. And they're too scared to step outside of that system and become human again. That's that's the problem, brother. I mean, the, a, a real human is here to, to be themselves and discover yourself to the full of potential. That's what freedom is. Now, if you're not prepared to do that, well, then you're going to be corralled, you're going to be guided, you're going to be told what and who you are and what to think, and you're going to have to work this little mundane job you don't like and pay to be alive and the one with the most wins, you know, and that's not what life's about. I, I love how... <laughs> all expansive and all inclusive this image is and it 
it's literally what we discovered in our own lives. Once we, um, once we disengaged with the labels that we were given and, and thought that we were in this life, you know, all the, you are your profession, you are your bank account, you are your status in society, you are those things. You, you're left with really asking yourself, well, who am I and why am I here? And man, people like you have shown um, the way, not the way of others to follow, but what it means that if you truly um, find that light inside of you and what, what your purpose is and you follow it, things tend to fall into place for you. And life tends to unfold in a really uh, exciting and beautiful ways, not as expected or not as we make it up in our minds, but even better. I mean, you and I shared that our heart is a lot, a lot of our heart is in music and in creation of music. But I think we also this, you know, being disillusioned with how the entertainment world really works and what it's really about and understanding we can't operate in this matrix world. So we came to a, um, we came to the conclusion that we want to help people to find out who they really are and show them what it means to live like that. I think you just recently have shown what it means to really leave your comfort zone. I mean, you left a beautiful space that you had in Australia that I know you loved being in. You had, you know, connection with the plant world, with the animal world there, everything, but still you found your voice in a completely different country. Um, what do you think? I, it's, it's almost, it's almost hard for me to explain to people. What I see is there's going to be such a difference in how we live that it's truly giving yourself permission to um, let go who you used to be. Because mm. that, that is over, but people only see it on the outside. What does that mean on the inside? And um, do we also have to let go of relationships? Do we also sometimes have to let go of family members? How did that work in your life? Well, yeah, sometimes you do. You've got to let go of all of that sort of stuff. You can't have emotional attachment to, to other things or even other people. They're on their own journey. I mean, sure, you'll have emotional attachment to people, but if they're going to choose to do something which is different to what you would choose, well, you've just got to be okay with that and have no emotional attachment to the outcome of that. And, and being able to leave and just, just do whatever comes next. I've always had this saying, if you throw yourself to the wind, you can ride it. And, and some of the stuff that I've done in my life, like um, when I, I went overseas in, in 2012, I went to an ayahuasca retreat in Peru for 10 days and I ended up going right around the world. I was away for three and a half months. And I went to so many different countries, ended up in Gaza Strip, uh, all sorts of places, and got back home with exactly the same amount of money in my wallet as when I left, which was really crazy. And people say to me, how do, how do you do all the things that you do if you just throw yourself to the wind and, and ride it? How does all this stuff happen? You end up in all these, with these weird places. I mean, how do you do it if you don't like plan to go there? And I, I've always said, well, if I'd – if I'd had plans, if I'd planned my journey, I never would have done all those things because I would have had other plans and I would have missed on it, out on all these opportunities along the way that just present themselves. You know, when an opportunity comes, these things happen to you generally once in your lifetime. A little opportunity comes, you think, oh, I'll do that next time. And then five, ten years later, you're thinking, I wonder when that next time is going to be, you know. These things happen once. And when you, when you take these little gifts that are given to you, you can find yourself in the most incredible places doing the most incredible things that you never planned and you never would have planned. You know, you've got to see even going on a journey, going embarking on any project at all, as soon as you start that project, whether it's an art piece you're creating or, or a musical piece you're creating or a journey that you're going on, anything you're doing, as soon as you start creating it, it, it becomes a life force of its own. And if you listen to it, it will speak to you and it wants to be alive and you can let it live and it will lead you places that you never expected to go if you can be open to the, to the fact of what life is and what energy is. And everything has its own life. If you know things that we, A project that you create has its life because of the life you put in it. It's like a house. I mean, I look at a house. A house is, is dead. It's dead earth. It's stuff that we pulled from the living earth. We killed it and we built it into something that we think is alive, but it only has life when we actually go into it and we give it life. It's like any object we create from the earth. These are just dead objects that only have life when we give it to them. It's the same as any project you embark on. And what is a project? Well, a project is anything that happens when you get up and open your eyes and walk out the door. Anything you're doing, this is a, a project that you're embarking upon and it has its own life so listen to it 
Listen to it. There's this communication going on all the time, but we're not listening. Most people simply aren't listening to the field. They're not listening to their intuition, you know, which is the field talking to them all the time. I've said to people so often, you know, your heart is an electromagnetic instrument. It's a power source that sends energy to your brain. Your brain is a quantum instrument that, that turns possibility into actuality depending on the emotional input it receives from your heart. And you create the world that you live in via that emotional input, that emotional state, which is why the, the power elite try to keep us in fear all the time. Why when we see all this bad stuff happening, we don't see it as opportunity. It's opportunity. It's opportunity. The system's breaking down. This is great. This is great stuff. I mean, sure, it's going to be ugly, but it, it has to be ugly. I mean, look at the state of the world. It has to be ugly. So, you know, there's different ways of looking at life and different ways of looking at what life is. And I think that's that's where the secret is. That's where the golden nugget is. And when you understand that and you understand it's all about how you interact with the most, what you would perceive to be the most mundane of things, but they're not because every one of them is, is a life of its own. If you can just realize that, you can, you can change the way your life is. And if you throw yourself to the wind, you can ride it. You've just got to listen to what the wind is telling you. Yes, indeed. Max, you are um, never shy to look at what is happening, what is unfolding, and look at the 3D things that are unfolding. But how do you ground yourself? How do you, from, you know, on any given day, get from this is what's happening, but then switch over and give this beautiful, grounded um, and spiritual perspective of things? How do you do that? How do you ground No, no stake in the outcome, brother. I'm only here for a breath. I'm only here, ultimately, like I said, I'm here to experience myself and to find myself to the fullest of my potential. If mankind destroys themselves, well, it's, it's not my problem. I suggested a better possibility and a better way of doing things. If they didn't listen, well, they didn't listen. You know, the experiment will fail, and well, I guess we'll do it again another way. God has a, his plan or whatever, and he'll, he'll work it out. You know, but so I have no stake in the outcome. If this, I mean, I can see a better way of doing things, and and um, I believe that I should do the right thing in all that I do, and I should lead by example in all that I do. So I'm not going to go along with any of that stuff. So, but it doesn't affect me ultimately. I, I can, like I said, I mean, I can live out of a suitcase. I spent my life on the road. I don't have any real possessions. I can live anywhere here in Mexico. Even if the food chain breaks down, well, there's fish in the ocean. There's mangoes falling off the trees. You know, there's, there's ways through things. Um, I've always said you've, you've got to walk the path of the warrior. You've got to be able to face infinity without flinching. So you've got to be able to face with serenity odds and circumstances that are not included in your calculations. I never expected I'd be leaving Australia and doing what I did, but I had to do it. So I came here and it's okay. I can just get through it and do what I'm doing. It, it's all good. It doesn't matter. I can do what I do from anywhere in the world. So, I mean, I, you, you think of reality. Most people live their lives in a, in a state of fear or a state of anxiety. You know, they've lost connection with, with themselves. They're, they're living in their mind. They're in a state of anxiety for things that have happened in the past, which don't exist now, or they're in a state of fear and apprehension for things that may happen in the future, which don't exist now. So they're living their lives stuck in their mind in fear of the non-existential. And fear of the non-existential, well, we call that insanity. So you have a society that lives according to different socially acceptable levels of insanity, and they call that a sane, well-adjusted society. If you can get out of your mind, see, most people are too afraid to live. They're too afraid to live because they're scared of death. If they're too afraid to live, they're too afraid to die. It's a crazy situation that they're in, and they're in their mind because they're, they're, they're lost in their imagination. Because if, with what happened in the past, well, that's imagination because it doesn't exist now. What happens in the future? That's imagination. You don't know what it's going to be. So you're stuck in your mind. So you're too afraid to live. You're not, you're not experiencing the, 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 the taste and the smell and the feel of this present moment, what it could lead to. You know, so um, when you're aware of all this, you, you can't help but being grounded. The ground is beneath your feet. You're walking on it every day. How can you not be grounded? It's because you're in your mind. Get out of your mind. You're in this vessel. You exist in a 3D reality for a reason. Could be a clue there. You're supposed to participate. You're supposed to be aware of what's going on. Could be a reason. Could be a clue. You exist. There could be something in that, you know. So really, I mean, that's that's how to do it. I mean, and I, I, I use weed. I use hape. I use things that ground me. I 
Pape is wonderful stuff. Um, it's a tobacco snuff, which is very grounding. If ever I feel ungrounded, I just have some Pape, and I, I love that sort of stuff. It decalcifies your pineal and just puts you straight, gets rid of all the mind chatter, and you're just there for a couple of minutes. You go, okay, that's good. I'm, I'm back to who I am. But um, I think just an awareness of reality, brother, is, it's just – Grounding, knowing what you are is, is grounding. But you know, looking at all this stuff and thinking, well, why am I so stressed about all this stuff? You know, when re- well, I went away for a couple of weeks actually. I was down in Zipolito and I couldn't even connect to the internet pretty much for like three weeks. And it was incredibly healing, incredibly healing because I, there was no no chatter, there was no input. The world it was like it didn't exist. And I realized that I didn't come here for that world. I came here for this experience in this vessel. You know, we're too caught up in all that other world and what our peer group thinks and what we should have and stuff and all the stuff that's going on in Ukraine and COVID. Oh, my God. Turn it all off. Turn it all off. Go and pick a coconut or something, you know. Yeah. And the magically, when you do that, it turns itself off too kind of oftentimes. I mean, it's, um, you know, things are activated through our attention so much. But but you touched on a few quotes um, that you have said many times and in a few quotes that others have said what Krishnamurti said about being well adjusted to an insane society is is not a sign of health. Um, mm. But people like Krishnamurti and other teachers and spiritual masters, one thing that at least the ones that I feel connected to, they always have this beautiful balance. They come from this high highest perspective but they acknowledge we live in a physical reality there are things to do in your daily lives don't ignore those you know uh before enlightenment chop wouldn't carry water after enlightenment chop wouldn't carry water still be present in your in your in, aware of your surroundings and i think that is a um a difficulty for many people like you said either they're too hardcore in grounded and say hey i'm just fearful of what's happening Or they have their heads so much, so far in the clouds that they're just everything's going to be taken care of for me, unicorns and rainbows, and you know it's all um, the the balance is really the key here. And I so appreciate that you um, most of the time listening to your reports, which I encourage everyone to do. I think the main place is Bitchute right now, right for the Crow House. Yeah, Bitchute and Odyssey. Yeah. Um, what I so appreciate is you present the information, you give it out there, but. Most, most often, you remind people of their power and that it's in their hands. It's not in someone else's hands. And apparently, this is something we just need to repeat and repeat and repeat until we won't feel the need to repeat it anymore because it will be so uh, manifested in people's minds. Um, is there is there something like a, a meditation that you love to do? Is there something that, like a prayer that you like to speak? A lot of people ask us, Um, what the best meditation or prayers, and we can always say trust your guidance. But what do you do in that in that realm? I just go to that quiet place in my mind and I observe my thoughts. Um, I don't really have any standard meditation type procedure that I do. I just I just observe myself, uh, observe my thoughts. Are my thoughts my own? Are my thoughts serving me? Are things in my life serving me? Yeah? People need to get rid of the things in their life that aren't serving them. You know, if, if, if something is getting in the way of you being you and you experiencing yourself, get rid of that sort of stuff out of your life. You know, and um, when you're on the road and doing kind of what I do, well, you're in your own space, so you create your own reality. So there isn't really any any noise. So, yeah, I don't, I don't um, really have anything special. I just go to that, that quiet place, brother. I want to leave all of the Inspired Tribe with the beautiful words today. And there's, it's complete. Your thoughts were so wonderfully uh, expressed that they're complete. But I also want to ask you, Max, where can they listen to you, um, whether they want to listen back to what you've already said or in the future? And is there a good way for, for people to support your work and what you do right now? There's not really any way for people to support me at the moment. I've been shut down everywhere. I mean, I do have a WISE account. People can donate through that if they want. Or uh, I can accept cryptocurrency. You'll find it all on my website, thecrowhouse.com. Um, you'll find everything there. That if, if you want to go, if you want to some, see some of my early stuff, I mean, all my early stuff was about spirituality back in 2008. I did a lot of stuff to try to help people discover themselves and um, try to prevent this train from ever getting here. But now the train's here. So, But if you go to my website, thecrowhouse.com, you'll see a link there for a website called Alt Censored. Dot com and you'll find my entire archive on that website 
there's something like 1,500 videos on that website, all my deleted YouTube stuff's all there. So that's really good of those guys to have done that. And, um, yeah, thanks thanks for having me on, brother. And and we will get through this. People have just got to understand it. This this had to happen, and it's all about discovering themselves. And like I said, you've, you've got to be aware of this 3D world. You can get to a spiritual level where you're just – off with the fairies and you, 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 you're not paying any attention to the world around you thinking where energy, you know, where attention goes, energy flows. I'm creating the shadow by observing it and acknowledging it. We're actually allowing the shadow to exist by failing to acknowledge it. When people say that by meditation, you, if you change what's in the inner world, you can change what's in the outer world. A lot of these new ages will go in there and they'll close their eyes or meditate and they think they're going to open their eyes and the world's changed. Well, no, what, what it's about is, is applying what you discover in that inner world, taking that and applying it to the 3D world that you live in. You've got to have that balance between the two. And as soon as we establish that balance, things will change by default. You know, because if we we're in our moral compass and we were, we were doing the right thing in all that we do, None of this corruption could continue. None of it would be able to survive in that energy field that we would create. But that all comes down to rediscovering and believing in ourselves, which is everything that this system has led us away from. But, yeah, thanks for having me on, brother, and we'll, uh, we'll come and do it again. Max, I want to thank you um, for everything you've done, everything you've put out, everything you are. Uh, we're so appreciative. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, sharing what you see, and for encouraging people to look within, to go into this direction here, look within and find their own inner compass, find their own leader inside and take responsibility for their own lives. This is the message. There is no other message. This is the message. Thank you for bringing this to all of us. And uh, thank you, Inspire Tribe, for joining us. As always, these are special conversations to us and having someone like Max on is always a treat. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you so much, Inspire Tribe.